Hello, I'm Eric Rangel from Downingtown, Pennsylvania, and my exhibit for VCF this year is Ted Nelson's Vision. The exhibit is powered by Hyperduino, which is made by Roger Wagner Publishing. And when a person comes up and touches one of these points, Ted Nelson is a visionary who imagined the ideas of hypertext in the 1960s. So the exhibit starts in the early 1960s when Ted was envisioning hypertext and he had ideas for what are now called zippered lists for maintaining data structures of links to text that can be reorganized as needed. So these are some diagrams from his 1965 paper showing his vision. In 1967, Ted, at his own expense, went to Brown University to work on a hypertext editing system. And that's a picture of him working at an IBM terminal. Um, he was unhappy with the results of that system because it did not include all the ideas that he had. He envisioned hypertext as being able to visually connect related works of text, for example, um, an article and the source material, so you could jump between them and see exactly what was quoted in the source. So his vision was documented in computer lib and dream machines. And um, he lectured about it and he had ideas that he published um, about how word processing should be done and then the um, system design of that system with what he called lollipop diagrams. And you could see the kind of flowcharts he drew and user manual. And this actually became a product for the Apple II computer, which I will demonstrate. He coined the term intertwingled, and he also collaborated with Douglas Engelbart. Here is an example from Xerox, where a hard drive was discovered in a dump, and it had a Smalltalk image. So Smalltalk is unique because the entire system is stored in one file. So all your work at whatever point you've stopped is available. So that hard drive was able to start right up and leave off where it was. So here are some demonstrations of Ted's ideas. Xanadu Classic was a method of comparing documents using what he calls tumblers to address different versions of documents, even down to the character level. So what this is showing is comparing two versions of the Declaration of Independence, and they have different tumblers, and that's a way of organizing the text on a disk so that um, any new versions, it just appends another level to the tumbler. Um, an example from the 90s is called Cosmic Book, which had to go beyond the windowing system available. You had to have special code to connect material in different windows. And his greatest demo is called Xanadu Space. So underneath Xanadu Space is a zigzag data structure. This is an Apple IIc running a 1986 version of Ted Nelson's Jot Design, which was programmed in fourth by Steve Widom. So to show you how it works, the space bar navigates one word at a time, and then the right arrow moves forward one sentence at a time. So here I'm moving to each period, to the colon. Okay, now the left arrow moves back one sentence. So it's based on a mode. So initially you're in a word mode. So the space bar is word and then the next level above is the arrows. Okay, but then when you press return, you hear two beeps. Now you're in sentence mode. So the space bar advances one sentence at a time. Okay, and then the arrows move a paragraph at a time. So I'm gonna go to section three and hit the right arrow and it moves down to the end of the paragraph. So he designed the system to make sense for writers. So when you hear three beeps, you're in paragraph mode. The space bar then moves one paragraph at a time, and then it fills in the text below it as we go. 
So he wrote a sample essay to demonstrate the system. And then the arrows move to the beginning and the end of a document when you're in paragraph mode. So the left arrow gets you back to the beginning. And then if you press the right arrow at any time, it interrupts it and goes forward all the way to the end of the document. So here's an example. If I am in power, if I go to uh, level two and the left arrow then goes back a paragraph at a time and now it says please move this paragraph between the previous two paragraphs so the slash key is a cut and then I can move back and then the at key is a slurp which um, now it put the please move this paragraph right here between the previous paragraph and the next one so it's designed for a writer who's thinking in terms of sentences and paragraphs to easily rearrange their work. A popular implementation of hyperlinking is in the Macintosh HyperCard. So this is a Macintosh SE30 running HyperCard, and it, the theory was that um, people can create their own stacks of cards. So if you had an address book, you would have lists of addresses on each card, okay? And you'd navigate, you can search, and then you can link applications like a date book and see what you were doing back in 1989. So I wrote a simple stack of my own, and here it is, VCF 2020, just to demonstrate what you could do. So back in the 1980s and 90s, people were all crazy about fonts because Steve Jobs took a calligraphy class in college and went to Xerox Park and saw all the fonts that you could do. So you could click the right arrow here to continue. And Ted is known for inventing the back button because he insisted that there be a way for people to navigate back through a stack of what they had been looking at. And here's another back button. And I said, I clicked the left arrow instead of the right arrow. I must be creative. So you could play around on the card now using these tools. So now people were able to scribble and write their name and do all kinds of fun stuff with the tools available in HyperCard. Hyper Studio by Roger Wagner Publishing is an innovative program that does hypermedia for the Apple II GS, and it is still available for the Macintosh today. It used invisible buttons, so you could just take a graphic and mark a point of it, a rectangular um, region of it, as a button. So I created a button on the red spot of Jupiter that uh, runs an AppleSoft program. And what I created is a chord keyboard. So in Douglas Engelbart's Mother of All Demos, he used a five-finger keyboard to create uh, data entry for his um, systems, the NLS. So I created a simple program that reads the switches from the chord keyboard. So if I use my ring finger and uh, the rightmost bit is like a strobe, so one zero zero is a four, and then a one is um, my pinky, so I just strobed in a 4-1 in hex, which is the letter A. And I could do a 4-2 as a B, and a 4-3. For the 3, you need both your middle finger and your index finger, and then you get a C. So you could type on a chord keyboard. Now, Doug had an actually a different system than what I'm showing here, but it just shows what is possible today. To learn more about Ted Nelson's vision, you can go to github.com slash erangel slash vcfeast2020. On that site, I have a list of resources, and you can see demos of Ted Xanadu Space and ZigZag. And then there are more detailed resources at the bottom where you can see other videos if you want to go into more depth about Ted Nelson's ideas. Thank you.